everyone. Welcome to the next episode of Solve It Burke's Kids. I am your host, Kayla, and today we are going to be exploring the career of a student assistance program specialist from Care and Treatment Centers, Miss Amber Putt. Welcome, Miss Amber. Thank you for being here today. Hi, everybody. My name is Amber Putt. Most of the kids that I work with call me Miss Amber. I am a student assistance program specialist and I work with Karen Treatment Centers. What is the Student Assistance Program? The Student Assistance Program, also called SAP, which is probably, for those of you that are watching today, is probably the thing you'll hear and you can call it most frequently. So SAP is a program that's been around for a long time, much longer than you have probably been alive. And it is something that is there for all students, kindergarten through 12th grade. And it is meant to help you overcome any kind of roadblocks that you hit in your day-to-day -day or in school or maybe at home. So when you're going through a tough time or a hard time, that's what it's there for. We're meant, we're, we try to help with you with that. If I'm going through a hard time or I've hit a roadblock, who can I talk to to get help from SAP at my school? The number one helper I think of most often on a SAP team is a school counselor. They are probably one of the uh, people that almost always sit on a SAP team. And if you go to your school counselor and you say, I think I need help from SAP, they should be able to help you. And another person that would be a helper there would be there are teachers or any teacher actually in the building should know what, what SAP is and be able to, this is another word, but refer you to SAP. And the team of, is also made up usually of a school nurse. And so school nurses, is, they are somebody that you could go to and say, I might need help and staff might be able to help me. And also usually some type of building administrator. And those are your principal or your vice principal are usually part of the SAP team as well. And one of the final components of the SAP team is frequently someone just like me. Um, and I, again, I'm a SAP specialist and I usually work with the SAP team to see what other help I can provide. Even if your school is virtual, this team is available to help. Just let your teacher know that you think you need help from SAP. Miss Amber, what is one of the ways that you help students? So one of the ways that we help students overcome roadblocks and barriers that are, they're experiencing, even in elementary school, is by building resiliency. What is resiliency? Resiliency is a really big word, and we might not know what that means. So what is resiliency? Resiliency is the ability to bounce back from something hard or tough or sad that has happened in your life. And it is creating protective layers for yourself so that you can come back and still be you and still figure out how to be happy. And so that's what resiliency is. A really great visual or example for being resilient and building resiliency is something that can be found in a lot of places, but it's the egg versus the bouncy ball. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard this before, but imagine you have a raw egg and you accidentally drop it on the ground. <gasps> what do you think is going to happen? Well, we, let's figure it out. If we drop a raw egg on the ground, it's most likely going to crack and smash and you're gonna have broken egg all over the floor that's gonna to have to be cleaned up. What we know is we're probably never gonna be able to put the broken egg back together again. So that's, that we can see that that egg didn't have a lot of protective layers to it. It's all, it's all broken. But a bouncy ball, what happens when you have a bouncy ball and you drop it. You might even drop it on purpose to see what happens. What we learn about the bouncy ball is that all of the rubbery goodness of that bouncy ball, it hits the ground and it bounces back up and it might bounce five times, 10 times. It bounces a lot. It keeps bouncing back. And that's because the rubbery goodness of that bouncy ball is a, their protective, protective layers, what adults would call protective factors around that bouncy ball so it can keep bouncing back. And another cool thing about a bouncy ball is that if, you, if it stops bouncing, you can still pick up that bouncy ball and with your hand, give back a little more energy to drop it again and it keeps bouncing all over again, which isn't the same for the egg. 
is now time for our brainstorm break. Kids, I want you to think about all the ways that you can be more like the bouncy ball and less like the egg. How can you be more resilient? Ask your teacher to pause this video while you discuss. Great! I'm sure you came up with lots of great ideas on how to be more resilient like the bouncy ball. Now let's ask Miss Amber. Miss Amber, what is one of the ways that you teach students to be more resilient like the bouncy ball? One of the things that I learned when I was really little, and I keep thinking through my mind every day, even now as a grown up, is about doing turtle. And so I'll explain that real quick. Um, if ever there's an uncomfortable feeling, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm lonely, there's something that's making me uncomfortable, my heart is racing, my belly's upset, my brain won't stop racing, maybe my body's um, shivering or trembling because of whatever uncomfortable feeling I'm going through. Maybe I don't even know what that feeling is right now and I still have to figure that out. What do I do to help myself in the moment? And this is something called turtle. So a turtle is a really cool animal that has a protective shell. It was made that way with a hard protective shell. And a turtle, if it gets scared, can go inside its shell and wait until it knows that it's okay and then it's safe and then it comes back out. And so what we can do for ourselves is we can learn how to turtle. And when I say that, I mean taking your arms and hugging yourself really, really, really tight and maybe it even means closing your eyes if you need to for the moment or putting your head down. All of those things are okay. And when you do this, stop and pause. Take a long, deep breath. And then tell yourself in your head, what is the problem? What's going on? How are you feeling? and then decide how and when you're ready to move forward. This helps us by turtling and taking that moment. It helps us to be able to better decide how to control what's going on and how to move forward. So hopefully we feel more comfortable and can get back to a more comfortable feeling. Um, so that's one of the super awesome techniques that I love when little kids use, but I also love it when uh, teenagers and adults use it too. And also keeps us from hurting others, um, our family, our friends, our loved ones, when we are hurt ourselves and don't know how to get back to comfortable or okay. Hmm. Sometimes even after turtling for a few minutes or even an hour, I still feel upset. What are some more things that I can try? If you feel like just counting to 10 might help, that's okay. You can count to 10 in your head. You can count to 10 out loud. Um, you could also talk to someone, a safe person, a helper, someone who makes you feel safe at home. It might be your mom, your dad, your grandma, an older brother or sister, an aunt or an uncle. In school, it might be your teacher, school nurse, school counselor, or maybe even a friend that's trustworthy and positive. Some other things that you can do are uh, to, you know, take a walk, um, you know, draw a picture or write down how you're feeling and what's going on until you're ready to move forward and process through, you know, all of the uncomfort that you're experiencing. Thank you, Miss Amber, for sharing with us about the SAP program today. It is now time for our SAP activity. Kids, I want you to make your very own bouncy ball representing the resiliency we talked about in today's lesson. Follow along with your teacher and add in different colors to represent the different ways that you can be resilient that you discussed during your brainstorm break. Ask your teacher to send pictures to me at kallenbach at albright.edu so that you and your class can be featured on our Facebook page. Don't forget, it doesn't matter how old you are, you're never too young to have an idea that can change the world. Believe in yourself, because I believe in you. That's all for now. See you next time on Solve It First Kids.